Hey guys, I know it's been a while. Um, I was going to do a video on something else, um, but I decided that I'm going to do it on this subject that I'm going to do it on, if that makes sense. Um, don't worry about, like I said, how I look or anything. I just got off work. I do not dress up or anything for my kids. Okay, Alexa, stop. Sorry. She likes to butt in all the time. Um, I had somebody that commented on my YouTube channel today, and I wrote back to them, and I wrote a whole book to them, and then all of a sudden, it disappeared. But I don't know about you guys, but I hate when that happens. Um... And so I didn't want to write a book again, so I thought, I am just going to make you a video. So this person knows who they are because I will let them know that I am making this video for you. And this is to answer your questions. Um, so instead of me typing everything out again, I'm just going to answer it here. Okay? And anybody else that watches this video, they will of course, be able to receive the same answers if they have those questions. Um, so one of the things is they're doing research for their dad. Their dad is uh, a lot older than I am. So, of course, like I said, I am 59. Um, and that's when I had my surgery. It was in April. This is now September. So it's been five months, almost six months. Um, so yeah, so I, I was 59, just turned, it was my birthday present to me. Just, no, I turned 59, I think like two days after, three days after my surgery is what I did. And so, um, they were talking about how I mentioned, um, how I was, I had a mild sedation uh, because of sleep apnea. Now that's not totally true, okay? Um, what they do is they give you a twilight sedation. With this twilight, you can answer questions and you can talk to them. Um, you're still conscious, but you're not going to remember nothing, you know, or hardly anything, if any if anything at all. Um, for me, we didn't realize that I had sleep apnea until I went under, and then they realized it. And I kind of assumed that I did, but I never was um, tested for it. But I know that my ex has told me, uh, my children have told me that I stopped breathing, even though I never thought I did um, until years later. And then I, I'm thinking, okay, I, I do stop, you know, breathing wisely. But that totally confirmed it um, with them. So with me, they even turned down the sedation even less than normal for me. Um, because of that, I think if they would have known I had sleep apnea at the beginning, they would have tweaked the sedation a little bit better. Um, but because of that, they had to tone it down more. And so for me, I was, um, every so often I was awake. I was conscious. I remember it. Um, one thing I remember, and I was getting kind of annoyed, is... <laughs> They would tap on my shoulder and tell me to breathe. And I'm thinking, guys, I am breathing. I'm breathing. You know, and, and I thought, I want to sleep. Just leave me alone and let me sleep. Um, but yeah, they would keep on tapping every so often telling me to breathe. So I'm guessing that I was really shallow in my breathing is what I'm thinking. Um, I do remember the dentist saying that the tops were all done and that he was going to work on the bottom or vice versa, but one of them was all done and they were going to work on the rest. Um, 
I woke up at one point and had just a, a tiny bit of pain. Um, they gave me a couple of shots. I went back out. Um, and that was about it. You know, a lot of times, though, with mild sedation, even though you are conscious and you can speak to them, you don't remember anything. It's very rare people will remember anything at all. Um, I Like I said, I had no pain. Besides that little twinge at one point, and they gave me a couple more shots, which didn't hurt. Um, there was no pain. Um, after the surgery was all done, and then um, I was awake, and I remember all that, um, the aftermath. A lot of people don't even remember the after. One thing, like I said, that they do is they come in, the, the lab techs come in. There was, for me, there was two of them. And um, they had wax teeth that they made. I remember they put those on and they tightened them because I remember the pressure. It wasn't painful at all, but there was just pressure, you know. That they were putting those on and then um, they were measuring and they took my eyes were closed because um, <laughs> I did not want to see anything with the teeth until that day that I got my permanence and so I kept my eyes closed but I remember that it sounded like that they had like a cup of hot water and they had a knife um, like a butter knife or something, you know, kind of like when you frost the cake and you want to make the cake, the frosting smooth. And they would stick it in the water and then they would go along and kind of just shave off some of my teeth to make it the right size, you know, so that my teeth weren't too long. Um, there was like ones that they hit the side of my lip and of course it kind of burned. And that's why I realized that, oh, this is like a hot knife that they had, and I heard the clanking. Um, so that's how I got to that point, that that's what they were doing. Uh, they put um, a dot on my nose, a dot on my chin. They measured um, to make sure that my midline with my teeth were correct. They kept on... Um, closing my mouth to make sure that after the swelling goes down that I can close my mouth and they would fit inside my mouth. Um, and so they did all that. And then, of course, they took the teeth out and put the gauze on and stuff. And like I said, a lot of people don't remember that point. They don't know why there's a dot on their nose. They don't remember getting wax teeth put in. Because they're still out of it, you know. So when you have the mild sedation, like I said, you're not under, they do not do general anesthesia. That's one thing they do not do. It is twilight. Um, so it is through an IV, and they give you antibiotics through, the, through this IV also. And you are awake, you're conscious, but yet you don't remember. It's kind of like a mild um, amnesia that you have. And a lot of dentists do this. Um, I know that when I got my root canals, I didn't have IV, but I had the pill form, the oral form. And it was the same thing. You were out. You felt like you slept. Um, you know, when you woke up, you thought that they haven't even done nothing because you were just awake. And they did the whole thing, and you really don't remember. And so that's what these drugs are. It's kind of like a mild um, amnesia that, they, that it gives you. And so, um, like I said, during the procedure, after with the healing, I had no pain at all. No pain. Um, I let people know what I have done, you can see a video on there about my pain meds um, that I did, and I swear by it that it works if you do exactly what is said. Um, 
and you take exactly. This is from um, nurses that told me to do it this way. And this is what I did when I had four root canals at one time. And I had no pain at all with those root canals. I even forgot I had root canals because I had no pain, like a lot of people talk about with them. Um, and that is why I decided to try this uh, regimen again with the pain meds on my extraction. Because I thought if I didn't feel pain during the root canals, I should not feel pain during my 32 piece extraction and for on four implants put in. And I didn't. I didn't. So there's a video um, in my channel that talks about pain meds and it gives you, you can go to the Google Doc, uh, it has an outline where you can print out, you can keep track of your meds because you need to keep track of them if you do it that way. Um, also, go to the first video that I have and in this first video it talks about how petrified I am of the dentist. Um, a lot of people, I think, when they hear me talk about Gulpa and the extractions, truly do not understand how petrified I am of the dentist. Um, I would not go, I did not go to the dentist unless it was absolutely necessary. And that means that my tooth was broken off in half. None of my teeth, you know, I have to say, none of my teeth ever caused me pain. I've had a lot of them, a lot of my molars that would break in half, and they would not cause pain at all. Um, so I was very lucky on that, but because of that, I did not go to the dentist, you know. Um, the only reason I went this last time, right before I even thought of implants, was because it was very rugged and jagged um, and so it was cutting my tongue up really bad and that's what the pain was for me was my tongue being cut up and that's the reason I decided to go and seek out a dentist because of that if it was not for that I still would have my natural teeth I would still have sensitivity extremely bad uh, I can could not even eat things that were room temperature. I could not eat those things because they hurt my teeth so bad. And so I had to heat it up to just the right temperature. If it was too hot, it was painful. If it was too cold, it was painful. I always had to use straws when I drank to keep the fluids away from my teeth. Um, if I ate ice cream, I learned how to keep the ice cream in the center of my mouth with my tongue kind of protecting my teeth. Um, like I said, very, very sensitive teeth. If I touched them, they would be painful. Um, so yeah, so I never went um, unless it was an emergency. It was the only time I had abscess. Um, the one time I had one abscess, abscess that I kept for six years, six years, guys, and I learned how to draw the abscess out into the gum, the outside of the gum, and so there was kind of like a pimple, in a sense, um, and I'm sorry to say, I would take a needle that I would sterilize with fire, and I would pop it. And I would be doing this four, five, six times a day and draining it this way um, to keep it so that it was not painful. If I did not do that, the pressure would build up and then it would be excruciating pain. And it was excruciating when it first started until I drew it out. Um, and then I would just maintain it that way. And I did that on... Four, four or five abscess teeth that I did because 
I was petrified to go to school today. And so, when I say that I had the best experience with Gulpa, I truly did. When I talk about how it was painless, it truly was. When I mention how I was so comfortable there that I had no anxiety at all, I did not shake at all, I did not cry, I did not, any of those things that I used to do at the dentist, I did not have. I was so comfortable that, yeah, it, it was, like I said, it was the best, best experience I have ever had. The best. And so, this is what I want people to know. Especially if you have, um, it's called dentophobia. And there's some other names too. But if you have like a phobia of the dentist, or if you have extreme anxiety, you can't go wrong here. You cannot go wrong here. They are so great with what they do. Um, also, you mentioned how your dad is much older than I am. Um, us older people, I don't know about the younger ones, but us older people have to get a medical doctor's approval. And so either you go to your own doctor and get an approval, and they have a form for you to take, and your doctor will fill it out and sign it. Or um, I didn't have a medical doctor, and so they have one that they're associated with, and so I went down a day early, went to that doctor, um, and then got approved for surgery. So they make sure that you're healthy enough to have the twilight sedation, um, that you don't have any other problems, you know, that might creep up during surgery. And this is something that they have to do by law. Um, they have to make sure that you're okay. Um... Let's see. I mentioned how awake I was during the procedure. Um, I mentioned how much I remembered. Um, so I think, I think here I answered all your questions um, that you wanted, and and probably more. <laughs> so, like I said, it was the best. It was the best thing. You know, and you will hear so many Gulfa patients tell you that they wish they would have done it sooner because it was that life-changing. It is a life-changing thing. Um, it's still, when I see myself, you know, it's still hard to believe that I have straight teeth, that I have white teeth, um, that I have teeth that don't hurt anymore that I could eat whatever I want to eat. And trust me, I have tried almost everything. Um, you will see in one of the videos, I think it's week five, that I am trying some hard, so-called hard food, um, like raw carrots, beef jerky, corn on the cob, things like that, so that you can see me eating those. Um, there's another video that shows me eating an apple, you know, and apples aren't really hard, but that first bite, it kind of creates a suction. And that's the hard part, is that first bite. After that first bite, you're pretty good, you know, but it's that first bite. And to know that you can eat all these foods, um, you don't have to. I just, I just feel bad. I feel really bad for these other people that choose you know, choose to go a different route because I hear their stories all the time. I hear the pain that they're still going through. I hear that it takes them six months to a year to two years before they get their permanent teeth. Um, I hear how until they get their permanent, 
that they, of course, were dentures, temporary dentures. A lot of times these dentures do not fit that well, um, and it creates sores, or they're having a tough time keeping them in their mouth. Um, a lot of them, they cannot handle it. They gag over it, so they take it out. They don't even wear them. Um, the, a lot of them have mentioned that they can't eat in them, and it just, it saddens me, because with Gulba and his G4 bridges, um, you can, unless you have soft bones and the doctor, the dentist tells you specifically that you need to be on like a soft food diet for a while, you don't have to worry about it. You can eat whatever you want. Again, like I talked about in some of my videos, the first two weeks I was on, well, the first day after I got my teeth, the day that I got my teeth, I had the teeth and the fried mushrooms and stuff to try it out. Um, and it, takes, it does take a while to get used to biting and eating right again and, you know, things like that. Um, but you will get used to it. Uh, after that, I did go on a soft diet for two weeks. And that's only because, only because I had all my teeth before. So I had all my molars in the back still, and I would chew on, chew my food in the very back molars, the second molars. Um, with these, they only give you a set of, one set of molars. So you're, you lose a set on top and bottom. And so with that, I had to learn how to bring my food forward to the first molars to chew on because I was so used to having the back. Now, this is like if you get braces or something, you have to get your molars removed back there. Um, and because of that, because the stitches were back there, food would irritate the stitches. And that's why I went on a soft diet. Once the stitches came out at about the second week, then I ate whatever I wanted. It didn't bother me at all. Um, and again, like I said, I had to learn how to push my food forward to chew. And of course, now I have no problem. Uh, I used to bite my tongue quite often and stuff. I don't anymore. Um, you get used to it. You learn how to eat how to chew, how to eat right. Um, but otherwise, you know, you can eat whatever you want right from the beginning. It only takes 24 hours. 24 and you're done. And then you don't go back until your six-month appointment for your checkup. You know, no other place does that. Gopa is the one that has pioneered his bridges so that you can have that heavy load on your teeth, and it's fine. It's not going to hurt the implants at all. In fact, it helps the implants to heal better. And so, like I said, a lot of this, and I thought the same thing when I first started checking out Gulpa, is this is too good to be true. And it really does sound like it, because how in the world can you have extractions, implants put in, and the next day your permanent teeth, and then you can eat whatever you want? How in the world? But it is true. There is over 15,000 patients, way more. I don't know how much more now, but over that, that has gone through this. You know, and they're all saying basically the same thing, um, unless they have a special case. You know, but the majority, yeah, 24 hours, you're great. And then also, um, it, just lost my train of thought. But the whole thing is, is that it really is the best. It really is. Um, this is why I do these videos. Like I said, I don't like... Camera. I don't like being on videos. 
I'm very self-conscious because of my weight, um, because of circumstances and, and how, you know, problems and how I've seen me. I don't like any of that. But I'm willing to get out of my comfort zone to tell you guys about Gold Dust and his bridge because I truly, truly believe in it. And I've seen what it has done for me. I've seen what it has done for other people and how it truly changes lives. So, is it worth it? Is the, the financing worth it? A lot of people say it's very expensive. Okay, it's a car payment. You know, it's a car you're buying, basically. Yes, it is totally, totally worth it. Totally worth it because it does change your life. Having um, a healthy mouth and having beautiful teeth, gorgeous teeth, you know, your self conscious is sky high because of that. Um, I, I don't know what I would do without gold dust. I really don't. I am so grateful that I found him. And that I found this and I was able to find the way to finance it and get it done. Um, would I do it again? You bet. I sure would. Um, it was very worth it. Like I said, it was the best thing I have ever done. It was the best experience I have ever had. And I know a lot of people would never, ever say that about extractions, you know. But I am here to tell you, 32 teeth, it was a breeze, total breeze. Um, yeah. So, if you have any questions, go through, like I said, go through the videos, watch the videos, have your father watch them too. Um, video 1 through 8 will talk about my journey. It talks about, of course, my phobia with the dentist. It talks about how I found the financing. It talks about the extraction. It talks about my new teeth um, the day that I received it. It talks about all that stuff. After that are updates. And so I update you almost every week for a while, and then I kind of take it down a little. Um, and then, of course, you have like tips and tricks or whatever. Um, how to floss, how to water pick, how... Um, what supplies to take with you, um, what kind of foods, you know, things like that. And so I try to cover as much as I can for you guys and to keep you updated on everything. Um, so, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. If there's a subject you want me to cover, let me know. Um so far, like I said, I am doing great. My appointment is supposed to be the first uh, first week in October for my six-month checkup, but I moved it down to the end of October uh, because of circumstances. And so that is coming up really soon, and I'm excited to see um, how well I'm cleaning my teeth, how the implants are doing, and, of course, I will let you guys know, um, get it up to date on that um, but so far I'm doing really good you know same thing same that I said before you know I still have problems with my fees I always will until I get um, the reline I still have the gaps you know um, I still can blow bubbles through my food through <laughs> you know my teeth and stuff or in between my bridge and my gums and, yeah, that stuff is still the same. And like I said, that won't change until my sixth month. And then that will change, you know, a lot. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, even though if it didn't, I would be perfectly happy. I really would. Um, but otherwise, everything's going great. Um, still having no problems. Um, yeah, still, you know. It, it still amazes me every time I eat something cold, something hot, um, something hard, you know, 
that I can do it, that I have no problems anymore. It just amazes me. So, I hope, again, that this answers your question. Um, questions. I hope that, you know, you guys will join the, the Gopa family. It really is truly a family that you join. Um, and hopefully your dad will get a Gopa smile just like a lot of us have. It is truly, truly the best smile you can ever have. Um, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I'm always here for you guys. Um, you can either catch me on YouTube. I also have a Facebook page um, called the New Smile Gopa, uh, or no, a, a New Smile G4 Implant. You can find me on Facebook. Um, I have drawings every so often. I just had my first drawing that somebody won threaders. And we will talk about threaders later, but I think in the Flossing area, I kind of, I think I hit on it a little, but I'm thinking that I'm going to do a video on it. Um, and so as soon as we reach 100 members, which we're almost there, then we'll have another giveaway. I love giving things away. And so I have a list on my Facebook page that tells you how many members we need and what the giveaway is going to be. As we get more and more members, the giveaways are going to be bigger, you know. And so there's um, times I've gone up to a 1,000 members. And so every 100, we do a giveaway. I'm going to do a giveaway. Um, once it starts getting further up there, I don't know, I can't remember when, but like 700, 800 members or whatever, you know, I start giving Amazon gift cards for $100 or $150. Um, I have one that I'm going to be giving a water pick away. Um, one of the big ones. I have one that I'll give a travel water pick away. I have. So they're just not really small things. They start out small, but they're going to get bigger, guys. So the more people that we have on that Facebook page, you know, the better. And like I said, I love giving things away. Uh, that's one of the things that I enjoy doing is helping other people and stuff and, and doing this for them. So go look on my Facebook page and look for me and sign up, you know, become a member of the Facebook page. Um, you can always PM me on Facebook. Um, so yeah, I'm here for you guys. You know, if you have any questions or anything, concerns, if you need somebody just to walk through it with you and to so-called spiritually be there to hold your hand, um, I'm here for you because I want you to have a great experience like I have and like a lot of other people have. So for now, I will close out. Like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, hopefully I answered all your questions and you know who you are. You know, and this is for everybody else, too, but you know who you are. Um, so, until then, I will see you guys later. Keep on smiling, and hopefully all of you that need it can have a global smile also. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Bye.